Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake village. And we're going to jump in, talk about red September. We're going to talk about the key dates to be keeping your eyes out in regards to the BlackRock spot ETF decision or delay. And when I'm talking about red month for December, okay, I took notes here, courtesy to Mr. Crown on this one, man, shout out to him. Great channel. You should check him out. Eric Crown Crypto. Um, he did the research for us. No, I, I honestly, back testing is a good way to do things. But 13, so there's been 13 Septembers and four of them have been positive. So a 30% hit rate if you're long in September. And uh, unfortunately, the losses have been pretty uh, drastic. Um, I think the average loss was something like, um, I, I, you know, I, I actually, I think, yeah, the average loss 14%. Yep. Average negative return 14% for September. Um, you know, of course there's some outliers there. And then what else are we going to talk about? Uh, some of the economic data coming in today, actually, I think this is important, uh, because the market makers like to, you know, kind of throw the market one direction or another surrounding some type of a news event. And um, other than jolts, which is the job openings coming out here in the next seven minutes, um, <clears throat> jolts, and then tomorrow for the US, it's ADP employment change. And then I think it's pretty, pretty much a dismal week. Uh, well, PCE price, uh, personal income, yeah, so jobless claims, personal income, all these things will, you know, goose the odds in the favor of the bulls or the bears. And we'll be watching our rate hike tool, uh, which is going to tell us whether they're going to do another quarter percent rate hike, which personally, I think they could. Um, but don't don't quote me. Um, what else is going on? Evergrande down another 14 percent today. Not looking good for the Chinese market. They're talking about injecting some stimulus. Let's just look and see if the liquidity is coming in. Boom, you can see that liquidity coming in. And basically we're looking in relation to what happened last time they started injecting liquidity back here. Look, they did some here, they did some here. So they're trying to bounce the market. They're trying to help out Bitcoin. They're doing all that they can. But the question is, will it be enough? Will it be enough? And is Cardano going to continue going down? -o? I I think he probably is. So I'm going to get into some of the altcoins. I'm going to be uh, keeping my eyes upon here. And I guess let's jump into the charts here and take a look. Um, so Fed rate tool says 21% chance. We get another basis point rate height, 25 basis points in September. Um, what else do I want to bring up? I guess take a look at the liquidation levels. And here's kind of the uh, the levels on Ethereum. Again, 1600 of the downside, 1700 of the upside. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the market makers just let things kind of drag on sideways for a bit longer. Um, why? Well, um, they want to build more open interest and more people that they can liquidate. But you can see around uh, 50, 60 million, you know, $100 million worth of liquidations down to about 1618 or 1611. So wouldn't mind a quick swipe down there and then a swipe all the way back here to the top side of the range at 1684. And yes, that is the range. A four hour range break above 1684 or below uh, 1618, probably gonna get the big move. Um, why? All the liquidity is lying above or below there. And when those stops and those uh, you know liquidations hit, what happens? Uh, well, I think you know the story. Uh, other side of the fence. So I'm looking at XLM here, getting beat down. And this one, I just, think it's going to do the full retrace. Ultimately, the full retrace at some point uh, back to the range lows. Why? I don't know. Gut instinct. Call it that. Uh, very similarly to PP coin. 
this thing rallied up for no reason, and um, I, I imagine it continues on down. Another one I'm keeping an eye on for some downside action. Swiping the lows, the range lows, maybe one more time here. Uh, if it breaks, though, uh, area of interest, next area of interest. Yeah, I think this is the area of interest I'm looking at. At about 20 cents for Mr. Cardano. Um, let's take a look at Bitcoin. And overall, guys, I got some points for the bulls, some points for the bears. The bullish case is this, right, is that, you know, um, we're coming in to the election year. Uh, yes, September, typically a low month. But what happens is prior to the election year in August or September, typically the low gets put in for the stock market. Low gets put in and uh, then it makes new all time highs within a year. So based on the last 20 years of stock market price history, that's what happens prior to the election year. Why? Why? Why do you think? It's the reason you're seeing all over the internet. These guys are just getting paid and pushing stuff to uh, make things look rosy so they get reelected. I mean, we've all known it for years, right? And Warren Buffett's little comment the other day about, you know, if debt to GDP is over, you know, 20%, they're fired. They should probably do that. But I think they run this country as a debt system for a reason. They're enslaving people to to uh, inflation and stealing their wealth. Anyways, back on to my point here is if Bitcoin's a higher beta tech stock and, uh, you know, we're on our way to make new all time highs for the year in the NASDAQ, well, then you'd expect some kind of a higher low around the green 55 or as, frankly, as long as we're above this higher low at uh, 12,000 bucks. Although, if we saw a retracement like that, well, downside to action for Bitcoin. And the only way I'm really getting bearish on, you know, Bitcoin kind of, you know, losing its lifespan is if we uh, take out the low, uh, the prior low, uh, the breakdown low, and that is not going to look good for Bitcoin. Okay, so point being, if we're going to, you know, have a pullback, you know, and then pick it up and those lows get put in September or October and then march it up next year. Well, that would kind of be in line with our, our idea with Bitcoin, which was, you know, something like this going into the halving, get a rally, 30 percent correction, take off next year. Well, that would be similar to what potentially NASDAQ, NASDAQ could be doing. So just giving uh, some ideas for you guys out there and what I'll be keeping an eye on. Now, specifically, if we start breaking the range lows or even just this low on the daily time frame, the box of peace and prosperity and death and despair, if you start to see that area get lost, which that bearish engulfing candle tells me we're going to go back down in there and why I'm goosing the odds in the favor of the bears right now for swiping the liquidity on the low side for Ethereum and the low side for Bitcoin. I'll show you the levels on Bitcoin. Um, and yes, yes, we're getting into the conclusion of this episode of Bitcoin Advisor. If you did enjoy it, you're getting some good information, hit the like button, share it with a friend and check out the links below, uh, for some helpful information. Okay. Liquidation level on Bitcoin at 25.7, 25.5. Honestly, if it gets pushed down there, I don't see why, uh, why that, why they stop there. I don't see why they stop there and just just get it done, guys. Get it done quick and painless. What would something like that look like? Well, um, you've got that purple 200 exponential moving average. Where are the liquidation levels for Bitcoin? So the market maker wants to push the price up side down. Um, and kind of just fake everybody out, right? To the upside and the downside. So how do they do it? They're going to ping pong it a few more times in this range before they really break it down. Wednesday, Thursday this week, I, you know, really, it, it's kind of a no nothing week. So we're waiting on the monthly closure. And then I imagine surrounding the key date. So September 2nd is the BlackRock spot ETF decision or delay. I imagine they delay it. And then uh, that's probably going to happen the Thursday or Friday before. Why? Because uh, they're not going to release news on the weekend, which is September 2nd is a weekend. 
Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Are those jobs numbers coming out? Let's see what the jobs numbers are. Believe it or not, this could be the deciding factor. The deciding factor, I'm going to have to refresh my screen as that data should have came out. 27 minutes. Okay, I was off. Um, back into the chart. So sweeping the liquidity, you know, down here on Bitcoin, down here on, yeah, so Bitcoin to the low side, 25.3. 25.3 to the downside and even 25.8, you know, you're going to uh, get some bounce pressure likely unless it's going to continue the move to the downside. But uh, sweeping the lows one more time, completely fine. Um, and then, so I imagine it's something like this, guys. Um, of course, I could be wrong. Not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Uh, just giving you my thoughts here on the... Uh, Beautiful magic internet money. Um, so as we just swipe down a bit lower here, something like this, kind of fill out the wick one, maybe one more time. And then we're going to come in line with this purple 200, right? And that's the area where on the daily time frame we need to reclaim that. I do think we are going to mass a... Matt, the bulls are going to mass an assault up to the upside there at some point around 27.8 uh, to 28,000. And then we got to play the game of lower high or not. Um, the other thing I want to bring up here. So if we see liquidity getting pumped into the market, big, like big shots up, like up here, that will be a, a bullish sign, I guess, I guess. Bullish signs. So USDC FUD, Sam Bankman Freed over here and... All right, I'm going to get rid of all that and get back to my regular chart. On the daily. How's Pepe doing? Down 4% after the rug pull and going for more. Going for more to the downside. Oh, I wish I could get in on some of that, uh, but I'm not. Don't have time for it today. All right. And the other one, yeah, I think I'm going to leave you guys with that. Um, oh, yeah, last last thought here, last thought. If you're a point for the bulls, we do have one indicator we use called the hash ribbons indicator. Some of you guys are all familiar with the blue buy signal, if I can find it here. Um, there we go. Secondary chart. There it is. On the weekly time frame, I'm going to show you guys something that, you know, seems to hold true. I believe there's about 18 iterations in the past 13 years where we have printed a blue buy signal. Just going to see if I can get the right chart up here. Here we go. Boom. I'm going to get rid of this. Just noting here, accumulation distribution indicator is negative now, getting in the negative zone. So point for the bears there. MACD has crossed down and flashed red. And we are tapping the bottom side Bollinger Band, uh, the Trollinger Band, Bollinger Bands. And what does that mean? Uh, well, that's typically where you expect your bounces. And just by ticking above last week's high, we should get a little run up to that 28140 area. Um but we're not quite there yet. So, uh, da, 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 da. so, you know, could we swipe that 25,000 and wick the bottom side there? Yes. But back onto the hash ribbons indicator, as we are not talking about the MACD or the accumulation distribution indicator, but we are talking about this and the way it is supposed to work on the weekly time frame. Once printing a blue buy signal um, in a macro uptrend, you are never to come back and break the last prior weekly low on a closing basis so what does that mean guys that means this um taking off the bollinger bands and why there is potentially a case for the bulls well we have not made a closing lower low so candle body closure is going to be needing to close below here wicks below is fine 
as long as we don't close a candle body closure below there if you do see that guys bears are out bears are out to get your coins um okay on the other side of the fence yeah if we did lose that region right then everybody's going to be targeting down to about twenty thousand bucks or twenty three five and um you know important thing about that anyways we'll get to there if it does happen i think likely bounce first then not back onto the blue buy signal so the way it works we never break the prior low after making without printing new all-time highs so the way that indicator works i think it's only had one failure before but let me see if i can find an example that is clear and uh easy to see so we get the blue buy signal right here you can see hash ribbons indicator measures the mining hash rate uh, I, I, I should have a better definition on that one but you can see um, we get the blue buy signal right here so it would have flashed green there so you never come back and close below the prior low and that's a perfect example so could we be in one of these situations right here where we get the blue buy signal, make a new high, and then come back, retest the low, and launch off to the moon. As you can see, that was the uh, 2015 saga, or at least started the bull market. Started in 2015, January 2015. Bitcoin was 160 bucks. Okay, back on. So that's the way that indicator works. You can go back and test it, I think, 18. There's been 18 iterations and I think only two failures, um, two failures. So essentially, um, you know, pretty, pretty darn good hit rate, not enough iteration. So we did just print that blue buy signal here on this candle. So don't close below there. We should be making new all time highs from here, which uh, would send the market. And this is just statistical analysis. There's about a 70% chance. And the failure condition is relatively close. So technically speaking, you're, you know, very, you know, high risk, low reward. Oh, and that's what probably people are doing right now. They're probably going, all right, if I'm going to long it, if I'm long on Bitcoin, I'm going to do it from here. And I'm going to put my stop right below this prior wick. The problem is on some exchanges, we already wick below there, like Bybit and... Do we do it on Binance? Let's see. Yes, we did on Binance and Bybit, you know, the biggest leveraged exchanges, but still no closures below on the prior weekly low. That is good. So people are thinking, okay, all right, I'm going to long this baby. Maybe I'll wait for something down here, you know, enter there and long it up to here. Um, yeah, so people are, you know, going to build their long positions as we trade sideways here. And as long as the stock market doesn't break down, Bitcoin could hold on to it, right? If uh, Dixie keeps doing this, um, well, your hopes for that peace and prosperity are going to be sent down the drain. Um, <laughs> Tether dominance also taking a leg up here and uh, holding the trend. And this is the area to watch out on Tether dominance. So we got a bunch of warning signals to let us know ahead of time. Hey, underlying market dynamics are changing. Here's how we can make an adjustment to our portfolio. That's why you smash the like button and that's why you follow the channel. Bitcoin dominance also 49.25%. Uh, not giving us any gold there. Uh, but potentially with, um, you know, on the weekly time frame, looking bullish. The daily uh, is curling up now. And what a prettier chart. Just the nine and these gray volume bars. Much, much more. But it looks like it wants to have a short-term bounce for Bitcoin dominance. Um, other than that, guys, I think I'm going to leave you off. Um, but again, just reminding you, past 20 years of history what's happened prior to the election year in september august or september october ish we put in a low stock market makes new all-time highs that would be the bull trap uh, you know nothing's guaranteed but uh, i think 100 percent hit rate on that one is not not too bad all right have a blessed and highly favored day take care